Hi, Riley. Thank you so much for coming on this webinar. Uh, I'm so excited that we can share the strategies with homeowners, and I'm glad that you uh, agreed to explain the strategy. During this presentation, we're going to explain the strategy, we're going to go over an example, and you're going to give us some investment um, options as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Martin. Happy to be here. Martin here. I'm a residential mortgage broker with Art Mortgage, and our group is focused on building wealth, which is also what you're doing at Scotia Wealth. Yeah, as a, as Martine said, my name is Riley Dorlin. I'm a wealth advisor at Scotia Wealth Management. So I help my clients with wealth planning and investment management and implementing uh, wealth wealth management and tax efficient strategies as well. That's great. And when we work in collaboration, for us, it's so helpful because we, as mortgage broker, we can help guide the clients choosing the right product, the right amounts, the payments. But knowing that there is safe hands for the investment make the strategy so much better. Yeah, absolutely. There's, you know, when we're talking about the way we work with real estate and investments, and oftentimes they're very linked, like it's important to have a nice team around people to make sure everything's working in unison because there are is many different steps it takes in terms of the flow of capital. So making sure it's all synced is very important. So that's why it's always a pleasure when I get to work with you. Thank you so much. So shall we start and show people what is the debt swap? Sure. Yeah. So let's dive right into what we're talking about, the debt swap strategy. Um, so firstly, what I want to talk about this is, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, one of the ways I work with my clients is by doing total wealth planning. And this is just one of the strategies we will evaluate for clients when doing a plan. So I always tell people, you know, when we're talking about stuff like this, it's always best to do a full plan first to make sure that before implementing a strategy like this, it is the right solution for you and the right fit with your full wealth management picture. So when we're looking at this type of strategy, we first, I first like to discuss, you know, what are the two types of debt? You know, we often hear the term there's good debt and there's bad debt, but really at the end of the day, what that means is, you know, is there, is your debt tax deductible or is it not tax deductible? So if you have a personal use debt, such as the mortgage on your, um, your principal residence, or if you've borrowed to purchase any sort of lifestyle asset or some sort of asset for consumption, that is not tax deductible debt. You can't write off the interest on that debt. Uh, so you're paying the full amount of the interest uh, on that. Versus tax deductible debt is when you're able to write off the interest on your mortgage or the other debt that you're using. And so we'll get into kind of the qualifications for that. But those are really the two types of debt that we're going to look, look at in this example. So when may the interest on your debt be tax deductible? What is it going to take for you to satisfy the qualifications to have debt outstanding where you're able to write off uh, the interest on that debt against your tax to lower your taxable income that year and get a bit of a refund? So generally, there are four requirements for that interest to become tax deductible, but really just focusing on that first one is the most common one. Uh, whereas if you're borrowing to invest, that's really the key to making that interest tax deductible. If you're taking on debt and borrowing, it is used for investment purposes, not for consumption or to buy a lifestyle asset that's not an investment, where you're borrowing to invest in an asset or investment that is going to produce income. So there's a couple of examples there, like dividends, interest, uh, rent, royalties, you know, capital gains is where we get into a little bit more of a gray area because it's harder to justify. You don't necessarily realize it each year. So where dividends and interest, we know we're going to get it and rent, we know we're going to get it each year. So it's very easy to get that deduction from it. Uh, like I said, capital gains and return of capital qualifications, that's where it gets a little fuzzy with CRA. So it is often to, I often recommend, you know, make sure it's pretty clear that we're getting a, a stream of income off of that investment. But that is really where the main criteria comes in. We're borrowing to invest in an asset that is going to produce income for us. That's when we're able to write off that interest amount that we paid that year to lower our tax income and get a tax refund on that so that our net cost of borrowing is actually much lower than what the posted interest rate is that we're that we're paying at that time 
So then what is actually a debt swap strategy? So we have our good debt, our bad debt, our non-tax deductible and our tax deductible debt. So a debt swap is the idea that we're trying to convert that, te- that debt that is not tax deductible into debt that is tax deductible. So to do that, really what we want to do is for the debt purpose of the debt swap, the first step is we're paying off that non-tax deductible debt. So we'll use the example of a mortgage on your principal residence. That is a non-tax deductible mortgage. You cannot write off the interest on that. So the idea is to, if you have a non-registered portfolio of investments that we have at our disposal, we can use that to pay off that debt and then reborrow against that property to reinvest back into the portfolio. So the idea is we're not changing your overall financial positions. Your assets are the same where you still have your house, you still have an investment portfolio, you still have the same amount of liabilities in debt, but instead of it being on your property, or on a mortgage, you've now borrowed against your property to invest back into that non-registered portfolio where we're investing in assets that give us income so that that same amount of debt is now tax deductible. We're able to write off that interest, lower taxable income that year and get a refund. So the idea of the debt swap is just to rearrange that flow of capital, not change anything as far as your financial position, but just rearrange it so that we've converted it, that debt from a point where we're not able to write off that interest to where it is becomes tax deductible. That's and right. that, I would love to just pass it over here to Martin just to take us through a little bit of a case study of how this works, just in more detail. That's right. So one of the most common questions that I get from homeowners when they're doing the renewal is, should I do a lump sum on my mortgage? And the reason why they're asking the question is, they know it's important to save on interest and paying a lump sum on your mortgage does do that effectively. But they also worry that they're going to deplete their asset. And that's where it's a, the strategy come into play. So uh, from a mortgage perspective, we can help with the numbers and show the savings. But we worked closely with Wealth Advisor to make sure that the plan will fit their goals. I want to go through a recent scenario that we worked on, and it's John and Casey. John and Casey have combined income of 250000 meaning they're in a high tax bracket of 50%. So we know that they're paying good money uh, to CRA. They have a mortgage of 600000 and the current renewal rate is 454 they have 20 years left to pay on their mortgage. They also have $200,000 in their non-registered saving. So they're thinking, should we keep that money saved there, renew the mortgage at 600, or should we apply 200 to a mortgage? And that's where the debt swap strategy come into play. And I'm gonna show you what savings they could be doing by doing a lump sum, but re- but using the HELOC on their property to invest. So to be able to do the debt source strategy, you need the right mortgage product. You need a re-advanceable mortgage. What is that? A re-advanceable mortgage is that you have a plan limit, and you will have a fixed component, and you'll have a HELOC. A HELOC stands for Home Equity Line of Credit. What it means is every time you pay down the principal on your mortgage, the HELOC becomes available. And so if you're starting with your plan limit of 600 and you apply a lump sum of 200000 on your mortgage, you will now have 200000 available on your HELOC to invest. Because of this scenario, we are at renewal, instead of starting the mortgage at 600 fixed, what we will recommend is to t- start the mortgage at 400,000 fixed and 200 on the HELOC. Um, next page, please. So um, the $600,000 mortgage at 4.54 means they will be paying almost 3,800 a month where if they do the strategy and they start the mortgage with 400 into the fixed portion and 200 in the HELOC, 
your payments are going to be similar, but they're going to have a saving of about almost $107. Now, in this portion, this new portion, the important component is that the interest on the HELOC, the $1,158.33, is being used to invest. And so that part is tax deductible. So when we compare the situation where they didn't do the lump sum and they're paying the $3,800, none of that interest is tax deductible. If they use the debt swap, if they use the $200 on the HELOC to invest, that interest becomes tax deductible. So now there's two savings here. There's the $106 and there's the interest that's going to save income tax. All right. After five years, when they start at four hundred thousand, they will be paying sixty nine dollars in principal. So after five years, with the four hundred thousand dollar mortgage, they're going to be paying just under seventy thousand in principal and eighty two thousand in interest. The remaining mortgage is going to be lower than if they do the six hundred thousand dollar mortgage and we also got an account for the HELOC interest over the five years which is almost seventy thousand now HELOC rates is variable it varies when Bank of Canada changed the overnight rate we're using the current rate of six point four five and we're adding five percent fifty beeps to this so the rate that we're using right now is six point nine five this could vary it could lower over the term or it could increase. Something to keep in mind when we do the overall plan. Uh, can you change the slide? Now, we looked already that they saved 107 every month. If they want to increase the potentials of the savings, they could increase their mortgage payments by this amount. By increasing their mortgage by 107, which they would have already committed anyways, they're gonna save five months of interest. Uh, they're gonna save five months on their amortization period. Now, because they use the HELOC to invest, they're also getting tax refund from the government. If they take this 12,000 a year against their mortgage, during the five-year period, they're going to save 47 months on their amortization. This is a saving of $65,000 on your mortgage with no new money. All you did is you did the debt swap. You invested the money from your line of credit, which is also growing, which Riley's going to talk about. But the most important thing is there's no additional cost to you because we all we did is use the mortgage payment that you knew you were committing to. And we re um, and we distributed it in a way to make it extremely tax efficient. Now, Raleigh, can you explain to us what what product they should invest in? Yeah, obviously, you know, in the settings, in the investment solution is different for every client, which is, again, one of the reasons why I always encourage clients when we first start to go through a full plan, like, let's determine if this strategy really works for you. Is it going to achieve that tax savings? Is it going to lower your overall cost of borrowing? And then on the other side of it, once we've done the swap, what's going to be the right investment solution to make sure we're capturing the tax deductibility? What's going to be the right solution for you in terms of the risk tolerance we have, the length of time we can have this invested, um, and again, focusing on being tax efficient on that side too. So that's why I always say, you know, let's start with a plan. Let's look at it from start to finish. Make sure it's personalized and the right fit for you because everybody's situation is different. So it is always important to make sure we do that first. Um, but you know, especially as making sure we're filling out that first criteria of borrowing to invest in investments where we're getting 
cash flow, we're getting income. So it's important to make sure we're not really leaving it up to that CRA discretion as far as capital gains and return of capital, but why I always like to invest clients in in investments where we know we're getting income. So dividends, interest, where we got a regular stream of cash flow that can go either to, you know, potentially paying down some of that HELOC with that surplus that comes in, or, you know, if we're still in accumulation phase, it can be there to reinvest and compound our returns even more and have that investment portfolio grow at a greater rate as well. So options there, but, you know, making sure we're capturing that tax deductibility but then also giving us flexibility in terms of do we want us to slowly pay down or in, in little increments what we borrowed off that HELOC or compounding returns, which is often if we're doing this strategy, that's what we're looking for, ways to accelerate growth in, without taking on a huge amount of risk. And that reinvesting dividends is a great way to do that. Um, you know, that third point, managing risk is really important. At the end of the day, we still are borrowing to invest. So reading the economy and the markets is really important. Is this the right time for us to do that? You know, in 2022, where we saw interest rates going through the roof, the market wasn't doing as well. Probably not a great time for this. But now on the other side of that, where the markets have rebounded, interest, we're in a declining interest rate environment and, you know, progressive the uh, forecasts obviously being, you know, continuing to reduce, uh, Bank of Canada continuing to reduce rates. You know, this is a different opportunity than it was a couple of years ago. So that's why, you know, doing a plan is really important. Is it the right time? You know, making sure that the investments on the other side are risk conscious as well. We're not just investing in anything. It's personalized. It's right from a risk standpoint, a tax deductibility, the returns we want to get, you know, taking advantage of the Canadian dividend tax credit, which we get when we get dividends from Canadian companies. So, you know, just by getting a dividend, we know it's going to qualify for that tax deductibility. We also get a tax credit on that income. So it, that income in itself is extremely tax efficient. You know, interest income is going to be taxed at our marginal rate. So for in this example, in a top tax bracket, we're losing half of that. So not necessarily the best. So again, you know, being strategic with what we're going into on the other side of it becomes really important to make sure we actually are accelerating that growth. And it's worthwhile that we borrow to invest, um, especially, you know, making sure we're looking at a portfolio that is on side from a risk standpoint, cash flow, it's achieving tax deductibility but that the returns are more than the interest we're paying, you know, making sure we're trying to get into a portfolio where we are able to grow, you know, not necessarily take the same amount of risk as being in the overall market, but trying to go into a solution where it has a nice strong track record of returns that are greater than the interest we're paying, even before tax deductibilities, we have a nice barrier. Um, that's all really important. Um, you know, I say that and things to consider when doing a plan and making sure we're in the right investment solution for you on the tail end of it. And it is going to look different for a lot of people, which is why I do stress the importance of going through that plan. Absolutely. The strategy is usually recommended for a long term. This is not a short term strategy because there's so many changes in the market that can happen with the rates on the mortgage. Um, mm -hmm. That's why which stress the importance of having a plan with someone that can do a plan. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, I think as far as, you know, it's great to be in the right product from the mortgage side, you know, that's always, you want to have your options open. Um, but, you know, as far as the actual borrowing to invest, I do, you know, agree with you. The time horizon is really important, you know, like a five-year runway where we know, okay, we kind of have a bit more of an expectation. So the market can do anything on a month-to-month -month basis. So we want to make sure we have enough time horizon where we kind of know the direction of the market and we kind of have a really strong idea that, okay, the returns are going to be greater than the interest. You know, obviously we can't guarantee anything. But that's why there is a level of risk associated with borrowing to invest. Um, but investments in general. So the idea is trying not to change our situation, like as Martine said earlier, keep our financial situation the way it is in terms of assets, liabilities, but just rearranging the flow of capital to be more tax efficient, to accelerate growth, making sure we're putting the surpluses in the right place to even accelerate that even further. Uh, but then making sure we're doing all the right things in terms of planning, being on side with risk, understanding how much time we have to invest. And if you know time price is shorter, Maybe we look at more conservative investments and then to the point where it may not even be worth investing at all if you need that money much sooner. Um, so again, all part, of, all part of looking at the full financial picture, making sure that the plan and the strategies are actually the right fit. But you know, it's great to look at these options because they do have a really strong, and we saw an example, 
can have a really strong material impact and really help us grow and protect our wealth over the long term. Yes. And the example we use, we used it full to 100,000. If the clients wanted to start with a smaller amount, they totally could. The main point is we didn't add to the debt and we just convert it. They could convert less if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We're just trying to save a little tax when we can, you know, especially in this example, in the top tax bracket, every dollar does matter that we can save. Um, and if it means getting the mortgage paid off faster, having a larger portfolio after the fact, you know, it's great to be diversified as well. There is something to be said about that, having a real estate asset and an investment portfolio, because those markets aren't always correlated. I think in BC, we are seeing that a little bit right now. There is a little bit of a difference between the two. So having eggs in both baskets can help us in terms of, you know, making sure we're diversified and liquid at the same time. Thank you so much. Riley, I love introducing new clients to you, but if someone wanted to reach out to you directly, what is the best way to do so? Yeah, uh, I do have a website, rileydorland.ca, but well, I know you have my contact information. Um, so if anybody's interested, they're more than welcome to reach out to you to have us connected uh, or my email, riley.dorland at scotiawealth.com as well. That's always a great place to go. Awesome. Thank you so much, Riley. Is there anything else you wanted to add? I think that's great. I really appreciate you having me. It's always great to talk about this. And, you know, it's great to bring awareness to, you know, making sure that people know there's options and different things that we may not know about that can help us grow our wealth um, in a tax efficient way, especially in this climate. It's great to be tax efficient. So, you know, I always appreciate the opportunity to, to go over some of these ideas. Um, so thank you for the chance here, Martine. Thank you, Riley. And meeting with me or Riley has totally no obligation. If you wanted to know what it would look like specifically for your situation, we'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much.